All right, so one of the biggest things you want to do when it comes to being gang stalked, and you can say organized intimidation, you can consider yourself a political agitator. A lot of people involved um, in gang stalking, that gang stalk people, uh, aren't really sure who you are and what you're doing. They may be familiar with you, like if they live near you or they just, they're aware of your scenario, but most people really don't know who you are. In their mind, you could be anywhere from a real danger to somebody who you know is trying to save the rainforest, to somebody like myself who is deep in alternative research and conspiracy research. Um, they, they really have no idea. Okay, so that being said, I think my case turned out to be the most unique case because I had gotten into it with, you know, people in the cult world. I got into it with secret societies, um, all sorts of or all sorts of people, the corporate world. And when it came to gang stalking, the people I was into it with also monitor me tightly. And they're far more potent than the actual gang stalking thing. The gang stalking thing is more of like um private security type industry. They they can go find anybody. They can go find as long as somebody has a driver's license, they can pay them fifty dollars an hour or a hundred dollars an hour. Um usually these people will try to psych you out and wear sunglasses and stuff and make you think that, you know, this is like the FBI or the CIA or something like that. A small percentage of those people actually would be like a card-carrying member of the FBI or a card-carrying member of the CIA. It's very doubtful. At the most, they might be some sort of asset or something trying to moonlight and make some money on the side, but most of the stuff is just people, they're, just, they're human people trying to earn some money. And this is your experience. You're going through an experience of encountering what you call gang stalking. And one of the things I do is I let people know up front. Like, <clears throat> one of the things I learned growing up is watching, um, watching street gangs in Chicago is they always approach people and ask them, like, oh, where are you from? What neighborhood are you from? They do that in Los Angeles a lot. The street people, they'll say, you know, like, identify yourself. What neighborhood do you come from? Identify yourself. And police will ask you to identify yourself. Judges want to know exactly who you are if you ever go in front of a judge. So if you see somebody, like, in a car, ask them. Say, hey, did you, somebody pay you to follow me? And, you know, they'll, they'll respond to you. Sometimes they'll respond to you kind of aggressive. You can say, well, I was just asking in a friendly way. Or they, might, or they might be scared to respond to you, and I just be like, hey, man, there's nothing to worry about. I just want to ask. And I explain my situation. I explain who I am, what I've been through. I tell them my name, how they can contact me, and I let them know that everything's cool. You know, if, if you are playing that role, I have no problem with you. That's your business. And I move on. When I go into a store, oftentimes I'll ask the store manager. I'll just say, hey, uh, you know, um, I have a situation where you might have been notified by your corporate management to watch me. I want to let you know that I'm not a thief. Um, I'm not here to do any type of criminal activity or conduct some sort of uh, quasi-criminal operation in your store. Um, I'm an alternative research conspiracy theorist, and these are some of the conspiracies I covered. Here's my name. Go online. Um, you know, it's a lot of times I go through situations where the, the, the gang stalking people... It's gone up to such a degree with me where, it, you know, I mean, I've seen everything from my food being drugged to helicopters to, <laughs> and people are going to laugh at that, and I laugh at it too. Like, when I, when I tell people about it, I laugh at it. It's funny. But it's just intense, you know? I mean, it's hard to believe that there's somebody out there with a budget this big. And I tell you, my case is the most intense case I've ever seen. I've never heard of anybody uh, that dealt with gang stock and get it, like, as deep as I get it. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, like, like, um, like if somebody, if somebody, uh, if somebody, see, a lot of people get really intimidated really easy, and I don't know why that is. I don't know why a car following somebody or two or three people walking up to you should intimidate you. You know, you should have no fear within yourself of anything around you. That's number one. You have to erase all doubt in your life, and it's very spiritual. It, I used to interpret it as psychological, and it is, but now I interpret it as more as spiritual. And so the more connected you, you are with yourself, no matter the other person's intention, it's not going to affect you in the way they perceive. And I've actually gotten better with dealing with people because of this. I'm ten times stronger than I was a year ago. Right there. Ten times stronger. And actually, I, I actually meet more people through this activity. I got flyers. I pass out flyers. I go everywhere. I go to the hood and pass out flyers. I go to nice neighborhoods and pass out flyers. And I tell people, like, this is my experience. You know, I'm, I was an alternative conspiracy researcher for many years. And I went through this. And now I'm going through this situation right here. I'm learning from it. And, you know, so if anybody approaches you and tries to pay you some money to do something, if you accept that, 
you know, you're still cool with me. There's no problem there. Don't don't feel there's any conflict. You know, um, and I just rap with them. We just rap over the thing over and over again. So if you're going through gang stalking or whatever, it's not a big deal, man. People are on the internet talking about, they're destroying my life. My life is in jeopardy, blah, blah, blah. You have to learn to out-endure things. Like, uh, I, I love watching Muhammad Ali fight, man. Remember that fight he had with um, George Foreman, the Rumble in the Jungle, where, you know, he couldn't hit as hard as George Foreman, but he out-endured George Foreman. He, 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 George Foreman would beat him up for so many rounds, and Ali, he ducked a lot of punches, but a lot of punches he had to take with the Robodome and stuff. Then he, bah, 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 he came back, right? He came back and beat him, right? Hit him up. Then he, he was even telling them, you don't hit that hard. You don't hit that hard anymore. You don't hit that hard anymore. And that's how I feel with the gang stock and stuff. They try different... It doesn't hurt. You don't hit hard anymore. It, it does, it's not what it is. Same thing with... um. I don't know. What other motivational speakers? Uh, motivational speakers. Eric Thomas, who does that... Um, He does some really good motivational stuff where he tells people, don't be outworked. You know, I'll get up before you. Like, before... I, I've been slacking lately, man. I've been waking up, like, at 10 and 11 and stuff like that. Um... You know, I, I just came back, I just came back from out west, you know, I was out in Phoenix for a couple of weeks, and I didn't, I didn't let my scenario, I even had a scenario where the, the hotel I was staying at in Phoenix, they were trying, they were trying to, I had, there was this one dude that was working there, he was like this crazy cholo, right, and he was cool, he was in on it, but he was still cool though, like, we were still kicking that stuff, and I was talking to him, and they were trying to, these people in the gang stalking stuff, they were even using females, like paying females to walk by me and try to mess me up in a conversation so I couldn't talk to them and stuff like that, like, like some weird stuff. And so I ended up actually hooking up with one of the females and having a sexual experience with her before she knew it was me. Like she came to the hotel and she was staying at the hotel and her job was, was to, to be involved with it. And I ended up sleeping with her the night before she found out it was me. See what I'm saying? And so I didn't, so I, when that happened, I realized my vibration is going to help me to get through all this. I'm going to out vibrate the, the situation. And that's been how it's been going. Um, it's been really good like that, man. I just, I just find my way through stuff and the gang stalking stuff isn't that intimidating. They even, what, what else happened in Phoenix? They didn't do my room. But the chick is always a Mexican woman. I'm not trying to be stereotypical, but where I was at in Phoenix, it was a Mexican woman who did the rooms and stuff, and she was saying, you're not on the list, you're not on the list. Now, I know what's going on. They're playing some game and trying to find a way to agitate me. I'm like, oh, okay. So I asked her for the vacuum, and I asked her for the clean spots. I just started cleaning without them. The next day, they did my room every day after that. Because they saw, I'm, I'm not going to let something like that keep me disconnected from having a clean room. If i got to do it myself, I'm going to do it myself. And so they saw that, and they're like, you know, the gang stalkers were like, wow, man. And so that's when they decided, it was at that point that they decided that they wanted to drug my food. <clears throat> they, they, they'd go find some couple old gangbangers or, or something to try to walk up on me and scare me. They saw I'm not intimidated by that, you know? They, they, they go and find a racist-looking white dude. That doesn't work. I say, how are you doing, sir? Uh, uh, how are you doing? Um, you're getting out of your car. I hope you have a nice day and all that stuff. They go, they go and find the black dude. I, you know, I think. What's up, bro? You know, hit him on his arm like that. Um, the the Mexican dude comes in, and uh, you know, I can speak a little Spanish, and, and so I'm, I'm out there speaking. You know, I'm out there speaking Spanish, and you say like, uh, say, que pasa or que onda or whatever. Like, you know, you start a conversation, speak a little Spanish. You know, get cool with them, and so um, it became a thing where the gang side people weren't really sure how to deal with me. Like, they haven't had nobody, like, walk up to me and hit me in the head with their beer bottle or nothing. But they tried this stuff. They tried to put people in my path. Like, I was walking on the sidewalk. And they had, like, two or three people standing there like they were tough. I said, can I have a piece of the sidewalk? And they moved. And then after I got through, then they said something. One of them said something, like, negative. Like, meaning, like, you can't. Have it. They were trying to instigate an uh, interaction, a fight, right? I'm trying to remember. This was a few weeks ago. But I always try to keep a positive outlook, a, a good temper and stuff like that. And that's just something you go through. You go through this little stuff. And as my vibration is changing, like right now my vibration is not what it was last week. My vibration is changing every minute. My vibration is constantly changing. And as my vibration changes, my connection to other people around me, my connection to my reality, like who I was a month ago is not who I am now. And who I am a month from now is going to be completely different. And so I'm redefining 
my connection with the world around me, you know. And so, like I've been, I've been um, working over uh, somebody's house, you know, doing doing yard work, helping people sell barbecue and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I've been like, I've been doing, I got a lot of little things going on and stuff like that in the midst of the gang stalking. And I let females know up front, like if, if I want to hook up with a chick, you know, I want to talk to her and stuff like that. Like, like you know, I'm 30 years old, about to be 31 in July. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to settle down. I'm trying to meet every female possible out there, right, this summer. And so I approach the females, and I'll just let them know at the front. Like, yeah, you know, um, I got a situation going on and stuff, you know. And I just, I just explain it to them the best I can and let them know what's going on. and let them know what's going on with me. And, I, you know, I, I explain to them. And, you know, it works sometimes. You know, sometimes the female will be cool with it. One of them told me, like, oh, you got too much stuff going on and all that. Uh, and I said, well, you know, I mean that's fine, um, you know, at a later date, if you feel differently, uh, why don't you call this phone number, you know, I be, I try to be positive about it, and kind about it, and, and get through it, man, no, no matter what, these entities will not be able, when I say entity, I mean anything, spiritual, physical, humans, corporate world, whatever, secret societies, they can't outwork me in my own world, I'm my own reality, they're not going to outwork me in my own reality, I don't care if they put drugs in my food, or what they do, that's their business. They can. They have an opportunity to do something. They can do it. I feel where they're coming from. Not bad at them, but you know they will not have more drive than me about my own life. You know, and so everything is where it's supposed to be. At. Everything is cool. I love everything. Everybody's happy. Love everybody. I hope the whole world's a happy, better place tomorrow than it is today. You know, but I'm out there getting things I need to get done, and so I'm just reaching out to people, man. People uh, seem really tripped out about this gang stalking stuff. So, you know, like, you can email me or, or get a hold of me. I'll try to give you some consultation. I've only been going through it for a year, but it seems a lot more, um, I don't know. My, I, I think I experienced as heavy, one of the uh, extremely heavy level of it compared to what most people experience. And so, you know, uh, you know, if you use some consultation or something like that, you, you tripped out and you don't know what to do, you know, just hit me up, you know. And so I'm, I'm telling you, nobody else gets through it as easy as I get through it. I get through it, you know, even if somebody came up to me and pushed me or something like that, you know, I mean, it, I'm going to find a way to get through it. You know what I mean? It's, it's going to, you know, it, it's going to be a situation where I come out winning no matter what. No matter what, I'm going to win on anything in my life. So so I'll, I just want to put this out there to help people. And so that's a lot of people who watch my videos on YouTube. You know, I got some older videos where you see me like talking about stuff like extraterrestrials and stuff like a lot of that stuff is just stuff I came you know came out of left field with I'm sort of an artist I experiment with stuff with channeling you know I mean that stuff I had participated in and did I mean now my life's in a whole new ballpark now I'm out here really trying to help people and really trying to give people awareness about this gang stalking stuff and let them know it's okay to be yourself you don't got to be afraid you can you can speak but I talk I, I let people know I let people know on a regular basis, on an everyday regular basis, I let people know. And I don't care what people think of I me. Mean, people talk, that's the biggest thing they want to do is they want to portray you as being like confused or like, like mentally ill or something like that. I don't care. I'll let people know. I'll let people know, you know, like, you know, what's going on and, you know, they can pretend and play what they want to. You know, they're the one that has to live in the illusion, not me. I don't have to live in that lie. That's their lie. I'm living in reality. I know what's going on in my world, so. So just hit me up. Just contact me.